complex mathematical problems on the university level and so on. So, just wait. I think it's very important that we start to work probably with media and bring it in ninth grade, probably in time, even in eighth grade, maybe seventh grade, that children perhaps not only do a main lesson book, but those who choose to do a main lesson video in which they capture aspects of the main lesson in a video form. You can write this down, seal it up in an envelope, and present me this envelope in 20 years. I'm not asking anybody to accept this, even, you know, it may even shock some of you that I would stand up here and say this, and I go and consult at <coughs> Waldorf schools, what am I telling them? Um, I think it's something we have to think about. Number one, Waldorf kids are making videos anyway, and you can see them on YouTube. Just key in Rudolf Steiner, Anthroposophy, and you will see videos made by Waldorf kids many of them clandestine, since the, their teachers don't know that cell phones can film videos. They walk into your rhythm class like this, and they do things to push buttons on the poor your teacher. They'll come in saying, now you're going to see my crazy your teacher. Watch. Yeah, filming the whole thing. So they're very creative, very inventive. And uh, who needs Dan Dugan when we've got students like that presenting Waldorf education? So they're already, there's a, an 11 year old girl who did an incredible protest of the firing of her teacher in the Honolulu Waldorf School and presented a whole video about it, imitating all the other teachers and what they said to her about her teacher. It's powerful stuff, really powerful. And she has a whole future ahead of her. She can make many videos before she leaves that school. So this is going to be happening. The question is, does the Walt <coughs> movement want to give children a healthier direction in which a degree of balance can be brought, in which indeed we can really Christianize the media? Is it possible to do that? Could one imagine a Christ impulse working not just through books, and at one time, remember, people said the Christ cannot be in the book. Books are the devil's work. You cannot print a Bible. It can't be done. So, you know, that's what Lucifer helps us with. It gives us a big context to see we're just part of a big continuum. And the important thing is for Waldorf teachers to be accompanying children on this initiation path, and out of this will come new ideas. Steiner certainly did not want his words inscribed in stone. What he hoped was that we ourselves would go on a path of development just like his, and go back to the same source that he got Waldorf education from. Now, he said, you go back to that source, it's not the same as it was 20 years ago, 90 years ago. It's changed. It's always fresh. Every child who comes from the spiritual world into birth is bringing something new. So the spiritual world is never changing, never ceasing to change, rather, always metamorphosing. We have to be in touch with today's source, with today's spring of Waldorf education not what was there in 1919. Though that gives us a kind of map, a kind of guideline. That gives us sort of the globe, which changes slowly, but we've got to find the road map. We have to find the Google map that's going to tell us what the traffic flow is like today. It's said that Steiner would say things to teachers in Stuttgart at the first Waldorf school in the morning, and then in the afternoon he'd tell them the opposite. And when they got frustrated, he said, that's because I told you that in the morning, and now it's the afternoon. Everything's different. Can we have that degree of flexibility, that degree of mobility? I would say, right now, it's kind of, um, the jury is out. That, that uh, I do not feel that most independent Waldorf schools are really recognizing what the 21st century is asking of them. It's sort of business as usual, and 
you know, look, we've been around 50 years, I mean, we know what we're doing, right? Um, and one has to really be careful of that. The life is in the young schools, and I've been very, very surprised to see how much life, how much depth, and what a longing for Christianity is there in the charter schools, at least in the state of California. The teachers there want to bring as much religion as they legally can into their work. They really, really want to meet the children. They really want to be real Waldorf teachers, even though they're in the public school system, which does everything possible to make this very difficult. But the interesting thing is the Waldorf schools are new enough, they've been successful enough, and children are flocking to them in such great numbers that the state is right now a bit of a laissez-faire situation. It depends very much on the district you're in and how politically savvy you are. You can actually do a lot more than one might realize, and I'm amazed at their fearlessness when I see sometimes the timidity in many Waldorf schools about being spiritual at all, saying anything about religion. This is definitely a growing tendency. So. Something is certainly happening. We're in a time of great change, remarkable, powerful potential for Waldorf schools. And I just want to conclude bringing one more point, because it's already 9 o'clock. I don't want to keep you here much longer. That um, I've mentioned that Waldorf education is an education of the will. And that increasingly, for at least the first third of this new century, this is going to be the emphasis, and should be. And we see the preparation already occurring in the last third of the 20th century. Because Margaret Froelich, a handwork and woodwork teacher who had been trained in Vienna, had worked with Hans Niederhäuser, who was the first real crafts teacher in the first Waldorf school in Stuttgart. She came to the United States, brought handwork and woodwork, and then try to teach teachers how important these subjects were. And she was frustrated for decades because she said every school will just find a mother who can sew or knit, and that's the handwork teacher. And she wanted them to become familiar with the Waldorf curriculum and Steiner's principles of design and so on. Finally, in the late 80s, it became possible in Sunbridge College for a new program to begin for handwork and woodwork teachers to professionalize that. And to this day, that program is always over-enrolled. In fact, uh, Nicole, Nicola, Nicole Kielblock from the Philadelphia Waldorf School is one of the leaders of that program. Very, very important. Okay, handwork becomes professionalized, an activity of the fine motor system is taken seriously. Well, you still have the gym teachers out there. Who are they? They are dads who are jocks. You know, any dad who's got the time and says, come on, I'll kick the soccer ball around with the kids, or let's play lacrosse, or you allowed to do football in this place, huh? What's the matter? They would take over, and the teachers basically would just turn a blind eye to what was going on out there because they didn't take physical education the gross motor activities very seriously. And then Jamin McMillan appeared like a white knight out of the blue coming from Europe and said, PE has to be professionalized.